Hello again. So I've decided to continue making these little model railway centered videos, but focusing on my uh, workbench up in here because I'm lazy and don't like to move to film things. Um, anyways, this one is going to be covering a few of the weathered cars that I've done. So essentially, I've gotten this little process down of just creating a basic acrylic weathering wash with paint and then just you know, applying it to the sides of cars where I see fit. I have done this technique on five coal hopper cars today. I did them all in one group so that they will all have the same mix of uh, paint across all of the cars. Normally I'm not too fussed about that kind of thing. In fact, sometimes I actually intentionally make the mixes slightly different between cars so that they all look a little different from each other. But in the case of these coal hopper cars, I'm thinking that because they're going to be in the same train together most of the time, you know, on a uh, coal drag kind of operation, I'd imagine that it would look more right if they had a consistent and cohesive weathering wash, though the techniques between the various cars is different. If we take a closer look at this one, this is one of my Reading Railroad ones. This is the only one out of this whole lot that I think I actually bought new. And um, this was a new ready to run car I can't remember the make of it right now but it was only $26 which is very good deal because it has metal wheels it's a good weight there's nice couplers the reason I was interested in this car was because it's what they call a wartime hopper car and if you guys have seen any of my other cars on my model railroad I really really like wood sided cars they're just they're just fun and um yeah so these coal hoppers are wood sided not um, for 19th, 19th century reasons of wood being plentiful, therefore wartime austerity reasons of steel being used for um, battleships and so on. And as a result, they just sort of built the size of this car out of wood instead. This one in particular, I also like the color scheme of. This one belonged to the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad in Pennsylvania and probably hauled anthracite coal. I, this The... um. The text on this is also interesting because, um, if I recall, a um, it looks like a failed example of what's called kerning, which uh, we talked about in one of my graphic design classes, where the uh, the spacing of the letters of the word reading is just kind of weird because of the outside metal braces. Also, the um, <laughs> the um, logo on the end looks a little bit. A little bit 1940s German, which is a little interesting, but unintended. I have another of these cars, which is the sort of genesis of deciding to weather these cars today, which was this Southern Railway model of the same war, um, war wartime uh, coal hopper. Except this one is done in brown. And if you look on the inside, the inside used to, it used to be all that color. It was very light. Now... I really like it when a freight train is made up of a whole bunch of different cars that are all a little bit different from each other, and that's why I was excited to get this, because, you know, this brown hopper car that's got wood siding makes an interesting um, contrast to a lot of the black steel-sided coal hoppers that it would be running with. However, it was just a bit too light, and it looked a little too different, and it kind of was distracting, so I decided to dull it down, because these wood-sided cars would have gotten very dirty very fast because they're handling coal. And also with this one in particular, this is kind of like um, my model railroad's version of uh, Scruffy from Thomas the Tank Engine, if you guys are familiar with that, you know. Just the most mank, disgusting, rusted out coal car that's just borderline falling apart. I may attack this with more rust and weathering powders later to achieve more of that look. Because uh, that was actually something that did happen with wood-sided cars, uh, particularly in the 20s. Sometimes they would just crunch if they were on long enough trains. Now, some of the steel-sided ones I did were these two Norfolk and Western cars. So, Norfolk and Western is my favorite railroad. Um, used to live in several of its territories, and um, one of them being West Virginia, where, you know, coal is the state, the entire reason for people being there and that and lumber and also West Virginia is gorgeous 
But anyways, these two cars I decided to weather today because originally they were just all black, which is perfectly fine. But I've looked at pictures and videos of these on the old N&W, and um, something that I always stuck out to me is that even in some of the really poorly restored early color films that they made where the saturation is all weird, you can still tell that they're not... Per you can you can still see where all of the dirt is, which is interesting when you think that, you know, the coal dust is black and these cars are black, so you can just imagine how filthy they were. And um, I just kind of wanted to capture that look. So how I did it here, and similarly with the wooden ones, is I applied a light wash of acrylic paint, which was, you know, basically just watercolor, and I had streaked it down the sides, and on these cars, between the steel plate sections between the braces, I scrubbed off most of the paint so that the gray is really noticeable in the um, uh, edges and things. And uh, because that's where it would probably stick to most of the time when rain washes all of it down. Another thing I wanted to try to do was make the longer car look a little bit cleaner. And that's because the other car is of a slightly earlier vintage, which is why it's a bit shorter, and also the um, the dates are stamp are painted on the sides, which is kind of cool. And um, also noticeable is that the uh, because I'm a, a art nerd, the 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 font on the '30s car is actually a different font from the the uh, post-war car, which um, is neat. Uh, allegedly, the Norfolk Westerns lo lettering for their um, steam engines at least, after the war, wasn't a result of any graphic design thing. It was just the people in, that were actually designing the locomotives with like draft, draftsman tools riding Norfolk and Western on the tender like that, which is why it looks so weird and angular, but I'm getting off topic. The other car I did in this group is this nickel plate car, which is, again, a, a fairly newer car. According to the uh, side of it, it's 1942 but you'll notice that the sides are constructed differently. They're all slab-sided. And so with this one, I just... I didn't wipe it off as well as I probably should have, but I gave it kind of an overall dusty kind of look. Like, you know, the coal dust is settled, but it's not really, like, stuck into the grooves as much because it's all flat on the sides. Yeah, this was just a fun little project, and uh, here's a few clips of it running. In the background, you'll see the tank cars that I did previously, which kind of inspired me to weather these cars today. I might talk about tank cars next time I, I paint a couple of them.